Ishwin Singh, the choreographer and artistic director of the Queensland Ballet, has announced his retirement after a career as a world-class ballet dancer. The 2009 Australian film Mao's Last Dancer told of his phenomenal rise from extreme poverty in China to world-class performance in ballet at the highest level. Li Xuanzing joins us live now. Thank you so much for making the time. Thank you. And firstly, congratulations on such a remarkable career. You directed Queensland Ballet for 11 years. It came after a stint at, at stockbroking, so they are pretty diverse careers. Tell us how the dancing world here in Australia has enriched your life. How has the company grown over that period? What have been the highlights for you? Yeah, it's been a wonderful 11 years. Uh, I uh, just loved every minute of it, uh, but it's been a total transformation from a regional company to now a global standard ballet company. We have virtually doubled the number of dancers and we took the company from virtually around a $5 million annual budget to about $27 million during this time. But even just on infrastructure investment alone, uh, of our brand new Tom Dixon Center. Uh, you see the uh, the uh, background information there, as well as our new academy building. Uh, we're talking about over well over $100 million investments during this time. So it's been phenomenal uh, growth. Uh, yeah, look, I, I see that the philanthropic donations as well really exploded under your leadership. I have no doubt your high profile helped on, on that front. Do you think Australians broadly are good at supporting the arts? Are you leaving Queensland Ballet in, in good shape? Absolutely. It's been truly heartwarming to see the level of support, particularly in philanthropy and corporate partnership. Uh, it's just absolutely incredible. But I think it all takes a, a really vision to inspire people, a daring vision to inspire people. So I really want to come to build a world-class organization. And uh, as part of that journey, people want to come on to support to have that vision realized. So it's truly an incredible 11 years. I think a lot of our viewers would be very familiar with your story about how as a, a young ballet dancer, you were in the US when you decided that you wouldn't go back to China. You were detained for a short period by the Chinese consulate officials there before several high profile Americans intervened and, and really set you free to, to start a new life. It's an extraordinary story as all of us who have read your book or, or seen the movie know. How do you reflect on that period now, so many years on? I mean, it really was just such a, a remarkable chain of events. Oh, I could not have ever dreamed of having such a life and a career. And Bali was so far away from our daily struggles for just basic food on the table. And, you know, the years I was born into, uh, I was born in 1961, but between 58 to 61, there were over somewhere between 35 to million people died of starvation. So I was the sixth of seven peasant sons. Just imagine just what, what how harsh life was. So ballet is something perhaps discovered me rather than I seek out ballet. And then, you know, these seven years of incredible training, fabulous training at the Beijing Dance Academy, but was really brutally disciplined. And then I got a chance to go to America at age 18. And then, um, you know, I stayed in the West, had this amazing dream-like dance career. And then I met my Australian wife when I was dancing in London. And then she was the one urged me to come to Australia to finish my dancing career with the Australian Ballet as a principal artist. And then she was again the person instrumental in, um, you know, encouraging me to direct the Queensland Ballet. So it is dance is something I'm grateful. I have so much to thank for the opportunity Australia and the audience have given me to allow me a chance to transform this company to make a difference in the lives of a young aspiring ballerinas and to bring happiness and joy to the audience.